Let's pray. Let's ask for the blessing of the Lord for, our, for Him to speak to our lives. This is the time, God's time, when we go through that door, all our burdens, all our circumstances, everything remains outside, and now is the moment for God. Let's present our lives before God for Him to take a control of all the situations of our life. Let's present it before him so we may be at peace without having our mind outside. Your mind has to be paying attention to what God wants to speak to your life and heart. My God, we give you thanks. Thanks for this day, so wonderful, Father, that you have brought to our lives. In this moment, we, are, we put our mind for you to speak to our lives. Give us understanding, give us wisdom to understand your word that is alive and active, that your Holy Spirit bring word to our lives, to our hearts today. We want to leave this place different. We want to leave this place renewed, trusting that you are with us every day, my holy God. Thank you for this time. Bless my brethren that are here present today and all the ones that are watching us through the internet also minister their lives in the day today. We ask you in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. Very well, amen. brethren. I don't know how many of you remember, remember the message that I shared with you last Thursday. I was speaking about being a new creature. Do you remember a new creature, a new life in the Lord? I was, uh, my foundation was a text that says that if anyone is in Christ, the old things passed away and very well, you are a new creature, precious verse. I think that all the ones that we are here, I hope and trust that we have been able to experience this verse. We have been a new creature, amen? So the Bible says that the old things passed away, everything is made new. And all of this is made new. Uh, something uh, has to do with something that I have to share with you because there is a fight that comes in in our interior, a fight, constant fight and permanently fight in our lives. And what is that constant fight and permanent fight in our lives? The fight of the flesh and the fight of the spirit. It's a fight that is constant, that the spirit of God is rebuking us, is showing us, teach us, guide us, wants to take us to in that way that is according to the will of God, but then it's our own area that is that old man that wants to rebel, that flesh, that impulse, those passions, those feelings, right? That many times if we don't control it, it comes against us. And constantly we are going to be fighting those things that start coming out that is from our own. What do we give freedom to, to the flesh or to the spirit and the spirit be the one that guide us? This is only determined by, uh, by us. It's not that another person is going to say, for the spirit, you have to do this and the other. No, that is, this is a personal decision that you have to make on your own. There was a man that had two dogs and they put them running in a race. And before they ran, they said, this race is going to be won by the white one. And indeed, the white one win. The next day, the two dogs ran again. And he's, he would say, the black one is going to win the race. And it was like this. And people said, but how do you know the dog that is going to win the race? How do you know that? He was never wrong. He, he was, there were his own dogs. He knew which one was going to win. And he said, the secret is very easy. The one that I want, he, I want to win, I will feed that one. If I want the white one to win, I will feed that one. That's what happens in our life. What you are feeding, that's going to prevail. If you are feeding the flesh, the flesh is going to win. It's going to be more mighty, the win. But if you uh, subject the flesh and do, you feed the things of the spirit, then the spirit is the one that is going to guide your life and is going to teach you all the way to truth. I imagine you know what text we are going to be studying. I'm going to tell you to accompany me. I'm going to ask you to please open your Bibles in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We are going to be reading from verse... 16 ahead. We have it? But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh, for the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. There is a fight. You realize? The flesh is in a position uh, to the spirit, and there is a constant and permanent fight. 
That is what I was speaking to you about in the beginning. There is a person in the Bible, this a man of God, a man that the Lord used in a tremendous way, a man that reproved and set people to teach, to read and teach the sound doctrine, and he was even in a place where he found 12 disciples, and the first thing that he asked them was, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, we have not heard about this, and automatically he prayed for them to receive the Spirit of God. He knew how important it was to be full of the Holy Spirit and baptized by the Holy Spirit of God, a man that had things very clear, but a transparent man also, a man that reveals something that many would be hard for many men to say. Many men would be hard for them to say what this man said. And I want you to please accompany me to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 from verse, I'm not going to read the whole of it, but from verse 15, Till uh, verse 25, Paul sincers and says about, talks about the fight that he constantly has against himself. See, uh, verse 18, For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. Is not. For I, the good I, that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I'm doing the very thing I do not want, I'm no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. He's opening his heart in a tremendous way. He's saying there are things that I want to do that I don't do, and the ones that I don't want to do, I end up doing them. He's opening his heart and he's saying, I have a fight as a natural man. As a, fle a man uh, in the flesh, I have uh, constant fights. It's if Paul, being who he was, expressed himself in that manner, how much more we, how much more we have fights? Or is there anybody here that does not have that fight? Constantly, brethren, even let me tell you that it depends on the circumstance that we are living, depends on the moment that we are living, We can be surprised of what can come out out of our lives. Sometimes we think that we, con we think that we control everything, that everything is well and at peace, right? I remember once a pastor that telling a testimony, he was saying, I thought that I had self-control. I thought that I was well, that I controlled myself, that I was a man of God, that had things very clear. Till in a moment of my life, I found a man that went against me, and there was something inside me that I could not control it. And it was more mighty that that came against me, that was in, it was more might that was inside of me, and I came against that man, and I realized that I had something inside of me that I didn't even know. There are certain things in our lives that we don't know. Only the circumstances what show us what, who we are. A moment of nervousness, a moment of being angry, a moment of worrying. Moments that maybe we don't know how the situation would be, and we end up losing uh, that control, and we make mistakes. And there is where the Lord, through the circumstances, is telling us, do you realize you have to keep being treated? We, keep, we have to keep being treated by the Lord, and the circumstances show us who we are really. Paul is saying this, I have fights. I have fights constantly. I want to do certain things and I don't end up doing them. Or other, others that I don't want to do, I do them. What is happening? And see what it says in verse 24. I want you to please read at home for the ones that are taking notes because Paul is expressing here in a tremendous way. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Who will set me free from the body of this death? And then verse 25, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then on the one hand, I myself with my man, I'm serving the law of God, but on the other with my flesh, the law of sin. That law that is always taking me to do things that are not right before God. But afterwards, in chapter 8, verse 1, he says something beautiful and extraordinary. Regardless of his weakness and his fight, he says something extraordinary that is for you and for me. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the ones that do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There are for, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
For the ones that do not walk, uh, be led by the flesh, by the walk, by the spirit. And that's what the Lord wants for us to let us be guided, to let be guided by the spirit, for him to take us in that way, that way that is correct. I want to, uh, I recommend you to read chapter 8 completely because it speaks to us how we have to read in the spirit. Verse 5, for example, chapter 8, verse 5, for those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. They are thinking in the natural things, in the things from the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. This is speaking about a thought. Now I ask you to examine ourselves. What is it that we are thinking about constantly? What is it that goes through my mind constantly? Do I have to think that tomorrow I go to job, I have to do this, I have to do the other, tomorrow I have to do that payment, then I have to visit this family member, that I have to buy this that I forgot to buy today? Or are we thinking, there is a beautiful verse that I read this morning. What a beautiful verse. Lord, thank you for your word. My God, thank you because today, Thursday, we are going to receive a message from you. Lord, you have the control of all things. You are the ones that guard my exit and my coming in. Lord, glory to God, because when I look at the skies and the stars, I see your creation. You are great and mighty. Lord, when I see the birds in the uh, heavens, what a beautiful verse that you feed them, you take care of them. How much more you take care of us, Lord? What is happening? What is going on in our mind? Because the ones that think in the thing of the flesh uh, walks in the flesh, but the one that walks in the spirit think things of the spirit, things that build you up, things that fill you, things that make you come closer to the to God. Verse 6, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. How beautiful. It's not only life, but the Lord is saying something. Do you know what? To, to put your mind in the spirit also brings peace to your heart. What does this mean? When there is not peace, I'm getting anxious that I'm feeding the flesh. And this is why I get anxious and I get worried and I get into anxiety. And then there are feelings and things in my heart. Why? Because I'm not thinking in the spirit. I'm not conscious that God has the control of all things and that's why I'm losing my peace. But when we start feeding the things of the spirit, then we start happening something in our lives and that's the peace. The, the peace that comes only and exclusively from God. Verse 7, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It's impossible that someone that lives in the flesh uh, please God. It's impossible that you believe in that coming to church raising your hands, raising to the preaching, listening to the preaching, pray to the Lord one day, two days, three days a week, Thursday, Sunday, but when you live outside, you go outside, you live in the flesh, it's impossible according to what the Bible says, it's impossible for you to please God. Nobody that lives according to the flesh can please God, cannot please God. And that's the constant fight and permanent fight that you and me have, that we want to please God and if we want to please God, we have to live according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. Verse 14, another precious verse. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. And if we read the whole chapter, brother and sister, we are going to be surprised about everything the Bible says according to about li living in the spirit. Why do we have to live in the spirit? Because we are a new creature. Remember that once we have accepted Jesus as our savior, we are a new creature. The old things passed away and what happened, what passed away, that natural man, that sinful man that let himself be taken by his own impulses or desires is behind. And now the Lord has dressed us with a new dress, a dress of love, of self-control a garment where it says, Lord, everything is made new. Why? Because now is my spirit, the one that is going to guide you to all way and truth. And we are going to start experiencing, experimenting precious things in the Lord. Experiencing precious things in the Lord. Let's go back again to Galatians. 
when we read now in Romans that fight that Paul uh, speaks about, he speaks about it, he stereotypes it and he's sincere with what he's living. And then he keeps writing the letter and says, do not be worried because there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But on the contrary, we are in the spirit, we have life, we have peace. And he speaks about the blessings that we have if we are in the spirit and the things that are go, that go against us if we are under the flesh, if we are guided by the flesh, because there is a constant fight as we are reading Galatians chapter 5, 16, 17 that we read. Let's go to verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. What is that law? That law of the flesh. The law was established by the uh, sin and by the flesh because you have seen there is the law for you can fulfill the law but because man cannot fulfill the whole law of God lives in sin and we have entered in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that paid the price for the sin that paid our, for our guiltiness and now we have to live according to the spirit that is showing us and guiding us verse 19 now the deeds of the flesh are evident they are evident. You can see, you can perceive a person that really loves, fear God, that looks after God. Brethren, you can see that. You can see a person, a woman, a man that is spiritual. You can see that. You realize because of the decisions, the way of speaking, those things that are always speaking about because of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Listen to a person speaking. What is he speaking to you about? That's what they have in their heart. And he says there are things that come out of the flesh. There are things, deeds of the flesh, and what are those? Here, there is a list. Pay attention to this list, which are immorality, impurity. There are strong words. Sensuality, they have to do with uh, sexuality. And I, have, I want to stop here for a moment. Because sometimes we read this really quickly, but we don't pay attention to what the Word of God is saying. I want you to pay a lot of attention to this because this is Word of God. It says that it comes from flesh, it's immorality, impurity, sensuality, all those desires that come out of the flesh, sexual desires. A person that is born again is a person that have understood that before all what is looking is uh, pleasing God before everything else. There are persons that put the love to the another person before than the love to God. And this list that I have given to you are practiced for those because they love more the person than to obey God. And they know God, they know the world, but they don't, know, they don't make decisions because they love more the person than God. And they prefer to live in immorality and impurity before instead of obeying God. And there are consequences. You are going to read at the end of the list, and I'm going to give you the consequences that there are. But the Lord speaks very clearly to his people. The Lord speaks very clearly to their, his children. And even though it's painful, even though sometimes because of making decisions to please God, we suffer and it's painful at the end, the Lord is going to bless the decision that you made because you uh, did it to please him. And everything, all the ones that made that sacrifice to have a life in order and well before God, God is going to reward you. God is going to bless you for what you have done because he knows what you have suffered and what, how hard that decision was. But before all, you put God in the first place and you made decisions that even though you suffered, you wanted to please God before all. And I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying to you because your life can change a lot. And there are persons that live suffering and messages are very painful for them in their heart because they know that God is speaking to their heart and tell you that you have to make decisions in your life to put your life in order. But always you are putting the love to men and women before the love to God. Please God, make decisions and you're gonna be surprised how God is gonna support you and bless your life. When you start pleasing God, then God is gonna put your life in order. We is not us the ones that convince men. Is God the ones that convince men? You obey God, pray, put your way before the Lord, trust in Him, and He will do. Do not try to convince men. Only the Holy Spirit convince, but put your life in order before God, and you're going to see the support of God in your family and in your life. Let's move on. Verse 28, idolatry, sorcery, and 
and meetings, strife. Sometimes uh, we speak about idolatry and we think are all we only images, but for some persons, their job is the first thing. I have to uh, see what I have, see all of this, see all what I have, and they boast and they boast without realizing that they are falling in idolatry. Persons that also uh, uh, make idolatry with their children. I adore my children. That's wrong. You will only adore the Lord your God and you will only serve him. Your child is a present from God. And that present from God has to make you be closer to God, not be a distraction uh, from, be, from pleasing God. And sometimes without realizing, we put certain things before God, and that's idolatry. Idolatry, sorcery. Things from the devil, things that has nothing to do with that. Enmities, strife, jealousy, persons that they have problems with everyone. Everyone is a person that has problems with that person. Oh, everybody goes against me. How curious, everybody goes against you. It's not, cannot it be that it's you the one that have the problem? Uh, the child that goes to school and says, all the teachers, they don't love me, father. And the father goes, speak to the teachers and don't realize that the problem is the child. Sometimes this happens in our lives. I don't speak with the neighbor. I don't speak with this one. I don't speak with my friend from job. I don't speak with this one. And they don't and end up not speaking with anyone. Why? Because it's a person with jealousy, with pride. You think on yourself. You are selfish and you start causing problems around you. And one, the, one, of the, one of the things that the Lord is asking us that everything that is in our reach to be in peace with all, with all, because we have to give testimony of who we are. And here he's saying, strife, jealousy, enmities, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy. This is tremendous. This is a tremendous list. I'm reading it, but you have to pay attention to all of this. Drunkenness, carousing, and things like this, that they are not written, but they are like this, of which I forewarned you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Have you seen the consequences of the list that is here in the word of God? To say, Lord, I see. I, I see myself in one of these words, Lord, help me that the Lord have mercy and strengthen us to be able to leave that area that we have to leave, that the Lord help us and for us not to see ourselves practicing because one thing I want you to have this in mind, one thing is when we do a mistake and we sin. And afterwards, we realize the Holy Spirit rebuke us and we go before God and we repent before the Lord. And we don't do it again because we are conscious of the mistake that we did and the mistake that we have done. If not, we have the example of David. David, when he did the mistake that he had the sex with this woman, did he go again and do the same mistake? No, no, no. He, re he repented before God. He has forgiveness because of a moment of weakness, and he went with this woman, and he did this mistake. And there are men in the Bible that also did mistakes. They repented, but they were not constantly doing the same thing, because if you do constantly the same thing, it means that you are practicing because you are doing it constantly. And the Bible, the word says that the one that practice it, the ones that do it constantly, the ones that are conscious that they, what they are doing is not pleasing to God, that is sin, but they are doing it because they are giving freedom to the flesh uh, before than the spirit, such will not inherit the kingdom of God. And this shakes many times, this uh, confronts our life. But it's necessary to receive this word from God to realize that we live to please God and that this is established and is written for you and for me. Not to just go over the page. Oh, what this is, it speaks about the flesh. I don't want to read this. I want to read that I'm more than conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yes, you are more than conqueror and there are words for our lives. But as long as your life is in order, do not pretend to hold on to the blessings of God when you are living in sin, when you practice the sin, when you're living in the flesh, because it says that the reward of sin is death. That's biblical. Then we need 
the world to tell us and to review us and to teach us like a hammer that is hitting our heart and that the Lord is saying to us, putting your life in order. Why? Because it's us, the ones that will benefit from it, that we will receive the blessing when we put our lives in order. It's us, the ones that truly have to receive this as long as we put the Lord in the first place. And we have read this list that speaks about the flesh, the deeds of the flesh. And now we're going to read another list that is in verse 22. See what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit, it does not say the fruits. It says the fruit. And it starts saying several characteristics of this fruit. is when we get an orange, it's a fruit, right? You get the orange and it's a fruit, or the mandarin. When you take uh, you take the skin off, that they're easy to peel. Not all of them are very easy to peel. But when we peel the mandarin, we find several pieces, yes or not? That's the fruit. It's one fruit, but inside that fruit, there are several characteristics. And who has these characteristics? The ones that have received the spirit. The world does not have them. The world does not have this. The natural man does not have this. The natural man has another things that come from the flesh. That they boast and think that they are doing things well, but the spiritual man, there is something that is characterized him. Something marks the difference. And what is that that marks the difference? Let's read it. But the fruit of the spirit is love, there are persons that all the time uh, have a bitter face, like they had breakfast in the morning having a lemon juice without sugar, and once they have had an encounter with the Lord, they live in love with everything. Before they didn't get, say good morning, and now they say good morning, God bless you, how are you? Well, what a change this person has, because they found the sense to life and they realize that it's of no use to be angry but on the contrary they have to enjoy the time that the Lord gives us to us because every day is a present from God and we start understanding so many things those things that the Lord says that they are new new for us and there enters love not only love to God but also to the neighbor love to the neighbor to the others and we start experiencing a different love. What is that love that we start experiencing? The agape love. What's the meaning of agape love? The love that comes from God, that is unconditional love, that you give everything without expecting nothing in return. And where do you see this love? John 3.16, in such a way, God loved the world. And how was that love that he gave his only begotten son so everybody that believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life? If God revealed to us and manifested through that love, how much more you and me have to show to this world that we also have the love of God in our hearts, that love that is the fruit of the Spirit. Joy. Peace. Beautiful words. Because these things I'm saying to you, the world cannot experience them. The world can be happy, but joy? Joy is different than being happy. You may be happy for a moment, but the joy? The joy cannot be taken by anyone. Regardless of what happens or comes, you have joy in your heart. Because you know that the one that has the last word is God. A man can say whatever, and you can see and say, Lord, you are the only one that have the last word. I don't stay with what I see. I believe in what you say. I have that joy, and I have the peace. That peace that Jesus said, I give you my peace, and I leave you my peace. Not as the peace that the world gives. The peace of the Lord is a different peace. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding, that guard our hearts and our thoughts in Christ Jesus. Is the peace that the world is looking for but cannot find it. That sometimes they ask us, and why are you so peaceful? How do you walk with so much tranquility? Aren't you worried to lose your job on what's happening to the uh, business? I cannot sleep. Can't you imagine I lose my job? Can't you imagine this happens? And we say, no, no, I don't imagine any of this. I don't imagine any of this because my life is 
in the care of God. And what happens to me is because God has allowed that. And if God allows for me to leave this job, I'm not going to be worried because maybe he has something better for me and I will give him the glory. And if something happens in my life that I did not expect it, I will rejoice in the Lord and have peace because I have trusted in the Lord. And it says that the ones that trust in the Lord as Mount Zion, like Mount Zion, how is Mount Zion that is not moved? cannot be removed, but it stays there forever. Those are the ones that trust in the Lord, the ones that rest in Him, and these are the characteristics that have to be manifested in our lives. You cannot be in those conversations for them to say to you, this is a situation, did you see chaos, did you see the world, did you see what is happening? Oh, yes, I don't know what to do. You cannot speak like this. How come you don't know what to do? We are children of God. We know what we have to do. We have to pray, as the scripture says, pray without ceasing. We have to read the scriptures to know what's happening, that what will happen in the last days. We have to preach and speak about the gospel. We have our identity clear. We are the light of this world and the salt of the earth. We cannot behave and talk like the people of this world and make mark the difference. And the people to see who we are and where we are going. And the people to say, you know something? When you speak, it's different. You speak with a security. You speak with an authority, with a certainty. When I, when I listen speaking to you, my uh, I get uh, shaking in my skin because it's the spirit of God that is speaking through our life. We have to speak like this. What did the Lord uh, did? If the Lord went into synagogue, what did Jesus spoke? The scriptures, the same scriptures that also they read. The Pharisees, the teachers of that time, but why when Jesus spoke, they were surprised. And they said, he speaks like the one that had authority because he spoke with authority, because the word is authority. And the world also has to realize that you and me are ambassadors of Christ and that we have to speak with authority, not doubting. But on the contrary, we speak because we know what we are saying, because it's established and it's written in the world. We move on. Joy, peace, patience. This is something tremendous. Many persons did not have any patience. They wanted everything right away. They were angry the whole time till suddenly, once you know Jesus, the Lord starts dealing with your patience. How many wants how many want patience? Nobody wants patience. Do you have patience? I have it. Well, glory to God. But you know how the patience Times, if you want more or you want to strengthen your patience with the uh, test, with the trial. That's what the scripture says. The trial brings patience. If you want to have patience, the Lord is going to bring trials to our life. And let me tell you, they are necessary. Tests are necessary. It means that you and me are going to be learning to learn to have patience. And patience is to trust and wait for the time of God in the midst of the test. Patience is not going into a brother when suddenly saying something and saying, oh, I can't cope anymore with this brother. All the, every day it tells me the same. Well, the brother has been sent uh, by the Lord to you for you to control your patience. And there are things that God allows to treat certain areas of our life. Patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. That that you have con can control in the midst of circumstances. Oh, I can't, I can't, really, I cannot control myself. I'm like this and that's it. Mistake. That's an expression that cannot be said by a believer because if you say that you're a new preacher, then you have to let yourself be treated by God. You have to be let yourself be molded by God. You cannot say, I am like this, dear. You go with it. Well, for the wives and husbands, when they say this, you tell them, do not forget that you are a new creature. I knew you in the world, but now you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, dear. The things are made new. Now you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Sometimes we have to remember this to each other, to know that we have to change, that the old man is left behind, and that behavior, that proudness, that wrath have to change. And we have to let ourselves be guided by the Spirit and these fruits to come, love, joy, peace, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law. The law is for whom? For the natural man, for the man that lives under the flesh, that sinful man had a law. But once our Lord Jesus Christ came that said, it's convenient for you, for me to live, because the Holy Spirit will come to you and you will be temple of the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? is that one that uh, lifts up Jesus from the dead now dwells in you and in me and he says he the Lord says he will guide you he will teach you he will rebuke you the spirit will guide us by the truth to the truth and the way the spirit of God that Paul permanently said and uh, said be full of what of the Holy Spirit Paul said so do not be full with uh, wine but before be full of the Holy Spirit. A person that is full of the Holy Spirit knows where is going, where knows what has to do, knows the decisions that has to be taken. Why? Because the Spirit showed that to us. The Lord, when he found his disciples sleeping in the Gethsemane mountain, said, you have not been praying even an hour? An hour is nothing. You have not even to pray, haven't been able to pray even for an hour. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Lord Jesus he, himself recognized that the flesh many times is weak. And sometimes there are moments that we don't want to come to church. And there are moments that we don't want to read the Bible. And there are moments that we feel so discouraged that we don't want even to listen to a preaching or pray because the flesh is weak. But remember that the Lord has given us that self-control that when we subject the flesh and we look after the things of God, God starts bringing feeling to our spirit and starts is, uh, making the weakness, uh, and make a, making us more strong and blessing our life. Imagine so many persons from the Bible, if they let themselves be guided by that moment of the flesh, if they didn't do what they do. Remember the woman that was sick if she let her sickness uh, be led by her sickness and say, I'm a woman and cannot touch a man. And according to the law, a woman with that sickness was dirty. I cannot come close to the rest of the person. She had many things against her, but she didn't let herself be guided by the flesh, by what she was feeling. But she trusted and believed in what she could get coming close to the Lord Jesus Christ. And thanks to that, she was restored and healed. Can you imagine that blind man, Bartimeo, that was shy, shouting, Lord Jesus, have mercy of me, son of David. Have mercy of me, son of David. It said that she was screaming, and the people said, be quiet. Imagine that he would have said, why do I shout? I don't see where the Lord is. He's not going to listen to me. Everybody's shouting to him. She could have been discouraged because of the flesh situation, feelings. But his faith did not decrease. He saw the opportunity. Jesus was going by in front of him. Maybe he was not going to have another experience like this. And he shouted, Son of David, have mercy on me. Till Jesus listened to him and said, Bring him to me. And those men that were saying to him, Be quiet and do not bother the Lord, said, Come, come, because you have been in grace with the Lord. But are the things that happen. And sometimes those persons that say to you, how good you are, they can say to you the next day, you are horrible, you don't know how to do it. But do not, uh, do not be uh, with courage or discouraged with what people said. Have what, re retain what the Lord says. This man could recover his sight because he did not let himself be guided by discouragement, but he trusted in the Lord as Hiro with his daughter, also he could have been discouraged and say, why the Lord is going to go to my house? I'm still so far. But he did not take this courage. And he said, Lord, come to my house. And the Lord says, I will go to your house. And also the Roman centurion with his servant, he could have said me to you, Roman centurion, that you are not even a Jew. But nevertheless, the Lord says, I'm going to your house. And he said, no, do not come. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. Men and women that mark the difference because they didn't let themselves be guided by the flesh, but they believed the Lord, and the Lord made a difference in their life. There was a before and an after in the life of them, and the Lord wants to make a before and after in your life as long as you uh, subject the flesh and you humble before the Lord. When we recognize that he's sovereign, that for us not to be, let, be guided by discouragement, by sadness, us not to be guided, let us not be guided by what happened that day. Maybe it's not the best day of your 
life today. Maybe it was the worst day. Maybe it was a day that you won't, do not want to remember again. But I tell you, this day has changed because you took time to look after God. And God has brought a refreshment. God is bringing word to your life and is saying that he's with you every day, all the days of your life. And as he said to Joshua, do not be discouraged, do not dismay, I will be with you as I was with my servant Moses, I will be with you all the days of your life. The Lord is with us, but we have to learn, to learn to look after God, to learn to uh, look after the word of God, to be full of the spirit, to feed the spirit, for the spirit to be the one that guides us, for the spirit to be the one that reveals us, that shows us the decisions that we have to make, the spirit to give us wisdom, the spirit be the one that does everything that has to be done in our lives. Why? Because we look after the things, things of the spirit. We look after the things of the Lord. And if we don't look after the things of the Lord, we will end up feeding the things of the flesh. And without realizing, we will end up more outside than inside because it has prevailed the flesh more, and you have self-control. You can stop this. You can say, till here, I don't want to live in sin. I don't want to live causing problems. I don't want to live in these moments of flesh, but I want to do the will of God in my life. Then there are going to be a change very big in our lives when we put really things in order before the Lord. I want to end up with this verse. Chapter 6, and we're going to read from verse 7, Galatians. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. The Lord is saying to us, do not uh, be deceived, because God is not mocked. Maybe what you are doing is unnoticed before men, but before God is being unnoticed? No. No. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will, fro will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good. Do not be tired of doing good. The Bible says, do not lose heart in doing good. Why? Because in a moment I may have said, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of always being me, the one that goes and do me, the ones that goes and make decisions or say, always being me. These there are not any other persons. But you know why this courage comes? Because I always expect something in return from men. And that's a mistake that we expect something in return. But when we do all things for God, then there is no discouragement because nothing is unnoticed before God as we have read it. Everything that I do is not unnoticed before God. The bad and the good, the effort that you are doing to do good is not unnoticed before God. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, Well, we have opportunity, let us do good to all people and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. I think this verse is very clear. The Lord is saying, you know something, you have to do good always. Do not be tired of doing good. And also, something else, be paying attention to the opportunities that will come from God for us to do good to all people, especially to the household of the faith. Have you ever gone to a brother or sister and say, are you okay? Do you have any need? Can I help you with something? Because the Bible says that we have to see opportunities to be able to bless another brethren. Make the most of the opportunity. Make the most of the opportunity that the Lord is giving to us to help each other. Do you believe it? I want you to close your eyes and with all your heart, give thanks to God. You know, We are not perfect. If the Apostle Paul, Paul says that wanting to do good, I don't do it, and even the bad I end up doing, who is going to save me from this body? Who is going to save me of all of this? Paul was opening his heart and was saying, you know something, I have done mistake. I have done things that I shouldn't do. But he does, he does not remain there, stay there. He says, there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. 
For whom? For the ones that are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. There is not a finger to point us. Because the Lord has forgiven us, has forgiven our sins, has forgiven everything that we have been doing wrongly. He has forgiven us and has made us a new creature in Christ Jesus. And now we live in the Spirit, and the Spirit brings freedom. Because the word says that when there is where the Spirit is, there is freedom. And He has brought freedom to our hearts. He has brought freedom to those from those vices, from alcohol, alcohol, from drugs, from uh, lucky games, to all of that. The Lord came to bring freedom from that. As long as we humble and repent before Him, He wants to change, transform our lives. He wants to bring that freedom where He says He has made us free from the slavery of sin, but not a freedom to do again a sin, but a freedom in Christ Jesus, a freedom to bless His name, a freedom to rejoice in His presence, a freedom to rejoice before Him a freedom to worship him, a freedom to say, Lord, how great you are, how beautiful, thank you, my God, because you have made me free. Nor science, nor money, nor family have been able to do anything, only you have been able to, to do something in my life. This is why I live for you, and the Apostle Paul have ex beautiful expressions, like, I don't live for the world, but I live for Christ. Everything that I live, I live for Him and by Him. That before all things that for me were winning before, now they are rubbish for love to Christ. There was a before and after uh, that encounter with Christ. As for your life and my life, but you know something is something that we always have to ask the Lord. I want you to worship the Lord with all your heart because we have sung this to Him. We have to say to the Lord, Lord, renew me. Lord, renew my mind. Lord, renew my way of thinking. Renew my heart. Renew all my being, Lord. Renew me completely, my God. I don't want to keep having the mentality of before. I don't want to keep living uh, with that character or way that was not pleasing to you. Lord, renew me, my God. Say to the Lord with all your heart this evening, that truly comes out of your heart and you say it with sincerity to him. The Lord is here, believe it. His presence is here. If you speak, if you call upon to him, the Lord says that he will not despise a broken heart or a humble heart, no. If truly we ask him and we sing with all our heart, 